So you're a guy, you've been an entrepreneur your whole life since you were, since somebody's, you were younger. Somebody's running guy. outside in the rain. Somebody running. <laughs> <laughs> and this is an affluent on neighborhood. <laughs> on cue. Yeah. Um, you know, you're a guy, you've been an entrepreneur since you were young, starting different things from, I think it was pool business, to then you're on Wall Street, you obviously Spartan now. I've heard you talk about kind of like the long-term approach to when you set goals. Can you kind of talk about what you mean um, in terms of that as somebody who has, you know, set out to do one thing, you had the pool business or you had whatever, and you committed to it for 15 years. You were on Wall Street, you committed to it for, for 15 years. Now you're like 15 years into Spartan. You know, you just have that ability to set the super long-term goal and not stop till you kind of reach it. Can you, you know, talk about that a little bit? That yeah, you know, you know, I thought about it re actually really recently. Um, I thought about it because um, it's pretty refreshing. If you're out there and, um, and you're running a business or, or you're building a family or whatever it is, and you've got like a short-term mindset, you can get pretty frustrated when results don't come as quickly as you would expect them to. And, you know, my saying, which I'm not supposed to repeat publicly is my exit strategy, all right? Everybody in a business has, is supposed to have an exit strategy. My exit strategy is death, right? And I don't, you don't want to say that because I don't want to jinx myself. I, I, I certainly love this planet. I don't feel like dying. But um, when you do that, I was just thinking about this. When you do that, it's pretty refreshing because it's like the little swings, the COVIDs that shut you down, for you, they don't matter. It's a really long-term view. So I have to imagine you know, a place like China that takes a 100-year look at things, supposedly, um, it's pretty easy to deal with the speed bumps. Like, who cares? Mm. Oh, we didn't make money this week. It, it, in the scheme of things. But if you're short term and you're thinking and you're expecting, res like, it, that could be pretty uh, difficult to deal with because, the, right? It's, it's like <clears throat> all day, every day uh, pressure. Yeah. But, like, no big deal. It's a tough year. Yeah, it's we got 99 more to go. Yeah, it's I I am big on that myself. It's like there's no plan B, right? right? And it's like backs against the wall and when the hurdles come like that's why I don't think like I'm not really a believer in like a side hustle. Like yeah. I don't think you know because when somebody's starting a business as like a side hustle, right? It's like the out of just staying at their job and never committing fully to it is always there. And yeah. it's just the idea of like you know, burning the boats. And just having no backup plan, and yeah, it's, it's it's win or or fail, and it's for me, it's multiple times it's been win or you're you're moving in with a sibling or you're moving back home or, yeah. and I like to put myself in those situations, and the only reason you know personally I've succeeded at certain things is because I put myself in those situations. Otherwise, I would have quit. There's no no doubt about it. Um, if uh, and again, I'll give you analogies during this whole thing, but. Um, if you're in a 50 mile run, it's gonna suck. Maybe for some people it'll suck at 10 miles, 20 miles, 30, you know, different fitness levels, it'll, it'll suck at different points within that 50 mile route. And, you know, if friends drive by in a van at mile 30 <laughs> and there's music blasting and they got hamburgers being grilled off the back of the van and they wanna go party, it's pretty hard to continue on the run. Mm. Right, there's a plan B, mm. but if you're out there and there's nobody, and you got to get home to get food, you get home. Mm. You deal with it, and so that's that's really what you're talking about by burning the boats, right? That famous story. Don't give yourself an out. I'll tell you, in Vermont, we have a farm in Vermont, and uh, I had this vision. I wanted to build this general store, re revitalize the town, put in this wedding business, bed and breakfast, the farm rotational farming, we're gonna have the food coming from the farm, it's gonna to go to the general store, then we're gonna cook it, we're gonna have weddings. And I thought, you know what, I'll pay for everything. I was fortunate, I had just come back from you know my stint on Wall Street, I had some money, I'm gonna pay for everything, I'm gonna find these young entrepreneurs like I was when I was a kid, and I'm gonna hand them these businesses and they're gonna have a leg up because they don't have to struggle like I did. Mm -hmm. It's already paid for and they've got inventory and everything's set up and business is rolling in, they all quit. Yep. They all quit, and then the second round quit, and the third round quit, and I scratched my head, and it was like, oh, actually, the struggle, the back against the wall, the mortgage, 
telling everybody, borrowing, begging, selling your family, doing whatever. That's the reason you don't quit. Mm. As soon as you have an out, yeah. you quit. Uh, 100%. La, 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 la,